What's up, YouTube? Welcome to Guerrilla Tactics. And once again, the only place where you can commit guerrilla warfare to make change. Now, beautiful people, we have a lot of stuff to get into, a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, since the last video that you guys came on, which was about can mothers raise a boy into a man, I, thanks to my beautiful and amazingly intelligent woman and wife, R.A.L. Scott, came up with another topic called reality in the eyes of children. And this is solely about whether children can raise themselves. And if they do raise themselves, what can they foster to become? This is going to be a very deep, 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 deep emotional topic. And I want to get it into it with you guys. But before we do that, I got some things that I want to um, do with you guys right now. And um, once again, um, I want to get indulged into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Life just moves on. All right. Yeah. Three, two. The beginning of the secrets to the life that you needed Looking in my own eyes, knowing I couldn't defeat it All the feelings in my soul, all my thoughts and talk I gotta get into it So first, you guys know I've been doing nothing but ciphers for the last few videos So I got another one for you And it's gonna be based off of what we're gonna be talking about right now for children So here we go I want you to know just who I am I'm looking in your mind, but can you understand? I'm looking back into those days, I'm feeling like I'm lost I'm trying to understand who I am, but can't find no course Tell me why I'm moving back, I can't stop I feel like I, my brain is moving back into control So tell me what's going on as I walk this dark road I'm trying to understand what it means to be a man But can I do it by myself? I'm looking up, trying to find the pain Trying to understand the things that make me me So tell me what I need to do do, just so I can seek the dream to be the man that I know that I could be. So tell me why I gotta fly, but this pain hurts so much. Trying to be the one to make it back, but I can't stop. So I touch all the pain that was in her heart, that was in her mind. And now I'm losing my time. So tell me why, tell me why. Can you tell me who I need, who I need to be? Can you tell me what to see? Cause I'm fragile in my own mind And I'm asking you, show me the way Can you show me what makes me who I am? Show me who I am, tell me what I need to do I don't understand, I'm looking at you Trying to get the guidance and to understand To be the best me that I could be Cause I'm unique and can you see me? Ah, stop playing, stop playing, stop playing Nah, nah, nah and I was playing. Stop playing. That was just games. Well, anyways, we got to get into the topic. Um, reality in the eyes of children. This is the topic that I want to get into. Foremost, first and foremost, in order to understand children, we have to understand what they need. What they need, what they want. First of all, children in themselves need attention. Number one. Because they're so young that they connect to things different than when you start to become older and you start to grow and, and you start to expand your mind and your palate. They, they're more in tune to a lot of things and it's more sensitive to them. So your attention and the time that you and, and the time and attention you give them is important to them because it allows them to understand that um, they have a connection with someone. They're not alone. You know what I'm saying? Someone cares about them. Someone loves them. So they want they want to give that they want that attention. So they they seek it. Almost to the point where like I feel like a lot of parents, not all parents, but a lot of parents don't don't see it. You know what I'm saying? They're stuck in whatever they're doing at the moment that when that when they come in to want to gain that attention from you, 
they kind of shoot their kids off. You know what I'm saying? Because they're in the middle of something. But for kids, that's intense. Their attention is everything. Quality time is everything. You know what I'm saying? Um, ch children's wider, their thought process is different too. Their, ch their thought process is beyond different. So they have a wider understanding of kids' thoughts and feelings. You know what I'm saying? Um, so much so to the point where like, I feel like, I feel like it's kind of being um, pushed to the side in a way. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if you guys ever heard of um, this this uh, analogy, but I was around a bunch of parents that used to bring up this. Oh, you're a kid. You don't got no feelings. You're a kid. You don't got no stresses. You're just a kid. You don't know what it means to stress. You don't know what it means to um to go through pain. You don't know none of that. You ain't been through none of that. I feel like that's wrong. I feel like that it's actually the opposite. Um. Uh. So much so that in order for children to cope, they connect their personalities and who they are to action figures, games they play, um, um, even creating different fantasies and, 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 and characters within their own minds. And it all starts from when you're young. Why? Because when you're young, as a young kid, what tends to happen is that um, you start to create different formats and variations of life in your head. And it's when you're a kid that you are in this, what's known as a crossroad of two sides. Do I want to go this route or do I want to go this route? I can either be good or I'm going to turn out bad. But that's all based off of the experiences that they're being placed with from the time that they were born going up. So when you're, when you're a baby, they're draining in and taking everything around them and they're sucking in it like a sponge, trying to get understanding so that they can catch up. Um, which is mind blowing because um, on YouTube I watched what's known as game theory, and I also watch um, uh, film theory. And in film theory, they were talking about Yoda and how Yoda is so close to the biological um, makeup of human beings as far as the um, the palette of being born and growing up. Um, human beings are in nature the strongest species on this planet, so much so that we're able to use our intellect in order to adapt and to grow and to become better. But when you're a baby, you're fragile. It's when you're at our weakest point, both mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally, at our weakest point when we're babies. We can't defend ourselves. We can't feed ourselves. We can't um, uh, do things on our own that's supposed to protect and, and, and keep us safe. The same thing with Yoda. Yoda was so, um, was so high in, in, the, in the food chain, in the, um, not the food chain, in the hierarchy of, um, species. When he was, when he was a baby, he, he was too, he was really strong in spiritual power, but he wasn't as a baby. As a baby, he had to be protected. So he had a bodyguard. So they were talking about how, um, it was in later growth to when he became he um, became his full adult size where his innate abilities and ability to do things were more evident and, and brought out more. You know what I'm saying? Um, versus when he was a baby, he had the raw power, but didn't know how to control it or use it. Versus him being an adult, fighting the Sith, and he was a monster. So it's the same thing with kids. You're on a crossroads. Kids are taking in everything. Which means that as a, when you're a child, your, your emotions are even more heightened than when you are an adult. Because as you become older, you start to gain the ability to place blocks and barriers on things that you think is important or not important. You see what I'm saying? And you hold, up and you hold it down. So you're able to understand and, and, uh, and, uh, and correspond to things a lot better versus kids who take it all 100% personal person. See what I'm saying? They could either go bad or they could go good. Personal. And it's all based off of what they're experiencing as they grow. You see what I'm saying? So when it comes down to the emotional envy, they feel it deeper. I've heard stories about kids getting jealous about like a, a newborn baby and trying to harm the baby. Mind-blowing as it sounds. 
trying to harm the baby because they felt like they were taking their spot. Personal. The envy is on high. You know what I'm saying? Um, their, their ability to... Um, that you got to think about it, their emotions are, are heightened on a high sense. And emotions will be what's known as the fuel of a bomb. That's the substance inside of the bomb. That co that, that's mixed together to cause the bomb to explode. The explosion isn't the deadly part, it's the mixture. You see what I'm saying? So, what, so you got to think about what mixture you're putting in children as they're growing. You see what I'm saying? And, and it makes you wonder. If a parent is raising a child and, and, and raising a child up. If it's a bad parent and all they have is bad philosophies and thought processes and knowledges and understandings of things, the child is going to integrate and take that in. But what about a child raising themselves? Which means if a child raises themselves, that means they had no physical guidance showing them where to go. And if that's the case, then that means that that child is going off of experience. So now you look at it, the child is going to build itself based off the experience that's in, that unfolds. I was a kid that had raised himself. Did I have parents around him? Yeah, foster parents, the whole nine. But were they, that, were they that into teaching me and guiding me and showing me the path I need to go? No. No. I had to raise myself. Thank you. To me, thank God, first and foremost, he put me in the place I needed to go. So the guidance that I was, that I had was the word, was God, the understanding of God in the whole nine. But besides that, it was the suffering. You see what I'm saying? I feel as if as a kid, the experience of the recoil of emotions is way more stronger than when you're an adult. You know what I mean? I have my notes here, by the way. So, you know, I always got to have something right there. But um, they're at a crossroads moment. You know what I mean? They are open so they can be swayed into any path, good or evil. Anyone that they want. You know what I'm saying? Based off the experience and the influence. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're not just the receiver. They're also the influencer. They're, they can influence any other number of kids going forward. When you become an adult and you're going to school and you're on that bus, you're talking to your friends. Your friends are trying to get insight from you and you're getting insight for, to them. So you're just as much as the receiver as you are the influencer. You see what I'm saying? So with kids, kids are in tune to what's known as the raw forms of feeling. More than adults. Because adults know how to differentiate. The feelings and, and what they're feeling and why they're feeling. At least a lot of them. I want to say most. A lot of them know how to do that, okay? But there are a lot of adults that still have kid mindsets. And that's all biologically in here to the brain and so on and so forth. That goes into a whole nother topic. But kids can raise themselves. I feel like they can. Because kids now understand what they want and need. When they start to get a little older. See, when you have a young child um, that wants to play with you, their mindset is, I want to play with the person I care about. You're the person they care about. It's the same as the, um, the makeup of a baby chick. The chick is in the egg. When the egg hatches, the baby, um, the baby chick is going to attach itself to whatever first sight they see. The first sight. So if the mom had died somehow or something happened to the mother and the little girl hatched the egg and the chick saw the little girl, the little girl is the chick's mother. So it's going to attach itself towards wanting to be around the mother because that's the first sight that it saw. You see what I'm saying? It's the same goes for, um, for us human beings, but we're a little deeper than that. See, <laughs> this is weird using this as an analogy, but when you have a chicken... Right? Yep. The, let the chicken. Um, it lays an egg, but the egg is, is, is just the egg. And then the chick is forming with inside the egg, right? It's not attached to the mother anymore. It's in the egg. So the chick, when it hatches, it didn't have that biological connection that human beings do. 
when we have a child, they're still connected to us through the, the umbilical cord um, between us and them. Um, well, mothers and, you know, the baby is still connected. So that means the baby's experiencing what the mother's experiencing. So if you think about it, you're raising your child from the time they're in the womb, not from the time that they're born. When they're born, you're teaching them life and the meaning of life and what's going on in life. And it's show and pretty much like when you go into a new place, you ask them, oh, can you show me around? I, I don't I don't really know um, this area like that. You're doing the same thing with a, with a baby. The baby don't know anything. All it knows is what, what was inside the womb. That's all it knows. The connection it had with you is all it knows. So there's, it's not the same as a baby chick where when the, when the egg hatches, the baby chick is going to choose whoever it sees. Our babies know us. That's how deep it is. That's how deep it is for human beings. Babies know their mothers off rip. They know their fathers off rip from the moment they open their eyes. Why? Because that connection they have with the mother. See, they may not have been physically connected to the father, but because the mother was in tune with the father, that emotion was then sent to the baby. That's why it's imperative that a mother is not stressing out when is going when she's going through her um her cycles. Because that stress is going to the baby and the baby can't handle that. So that's why you have to be, you know, in 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 tuned and and relaxed and calm and, and at peace and in serenity and the whole nine, because you can kill your baby by doing that. Okay? So if the baby is connected in that sense, then that means the emotions you feel in life is what they feel. So they're feeling a raw form of emotion. When they get born and they and they're and they're starting to grow up, they still have that form. That raw feeling of emotion is still there. So what ends up happening is that whatever experiences that they're facing or or their um or feelings they're gaining with inside their experience, that's 10 times, 100 times what it is for an adult. So when you tell a kid, you don't know what you're talking about, leave me alone, don't come near me, they're taking that in. Like, mm, that's a new to their head. You know what I'm saying? So kids are able to, to they're, they're taking everything in as a sponge. Like, and it's funny because I always tell people all the time, it was funny how we're more, in, we're more, um, we're more savvy in, in knowing how to make money when we're kids, when we don't need it. When we was kids, we didn't really need it like that, but we was able to make money. I, I know I was. Yo, I was in high school selling my lunch. <laughs> I was selling my lunch. I was making profit and revenue in, in freshman year of high school using my lunch. And it was funny because when it happened, it was an accident, but people was throwing their money out. So I was like, hmm. Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Automatic. So next thing you know, I'm inside of the kitchen. Oh, mom, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make mom. You know, it was funny. I was plotting and everything. I was like, mom, um. How'd you make that sub the other day? Like, you show me how to make it? I want to start making it myself. Oh, I'm going to show you. She, she literally showed me how to make the sub and everything. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, okay. And I started making it myself. What she didn't know was that I had a business. <laughs> I had a whole business. I was making bread. It was raining money. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was funny because during that time, my mindset was already, mm, I want to start making my own money because then I could buy my own thing. How do I do that? Oh, like this? Hmm. If I can make the subs here, I could do this with them. Hmm, that's not bad. Hmm. I was more savvy into that. But as you grow up into adulthood and you start growing, you, you're hit with more responsibility. So your mind is everywhere now. So your thought process of, of uh, certain given things that could be important starts to get shifted. And sometimes you forget that you got this bill coming up. You got to go do this over here. Dang. I was supposed to be at that meeting for that sponsor. Ah, I just missed it. Yo, call Becky. Call the sponsor immediately. Call them immediately. Tell them I apologize. I'll give them a coffee and a dinner. But I need them to come back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All of that. But for kids, they're still taking everything in. So what they learned within that time frame of that experience and what they're feeling, they're going to integrate and take it in. So good example is Empire. The movie, the, not the movie, the, the TV show. 
Lucius Lyon was originally Dwight. When he fostered the idea of the lion, he the idea of a lion to him was that raw power and force over anything. The ability to conquer, the ability to overcome and, and take on any obstacle and not lose or fail. That was the form of a lion to him as a young child. So when he was um when he was homeless at the young age that he was, and that was the first place he slept at, when he looked at that lion, he saw power. Okay? That was an influence on him. At that given moment, at that small form of an age, he already understood that he might have to take on responsibility in life on his own. And in order to do that, you have to have power. Now, let me tell you why it connects. The reason why I brought that up is because I, in my experiences, was taught that in order for you to make change, you first need power. My experiences taught me that. See what I'm saying? When I'm in a job, if I don't like something that's going on in the job, I have really no say. It's up to the manager, the general manager, and the district managers. And, and then the ones higher than them. That's up to them, not me. So I can sit there and yell all day about how something ain't right inside the job. If the manager does nothing about it, it's not going to change. The only time that you can get a power in something, the only time you can get a, um, a say in something is if you had power. Now, imagine if my status went up and I became a head. I'm not in charge of the manager, but I'm in charge of the shift. So the ones lower than me have to listen to me. So if I didn't like how they weren't front facing on at 3 a.m., um, I say we're doing a night shift and they weren't front facing at 3 a.m. or they wasn't trying to change the coffees and um in the whole nine or even uh, uh disable and reassemble um reassemble the lottery they gotta listen to me they have no say see what i'm saying versus if i was on the bottom feed i was the the um the lower employee and then my head was there and i went to go do a task and they were like no no don't worry about that right now come do this over here i could scream and yell at them but who's gonna get in trouble me or them i'm gonna get in trouble because he's my head so then the, the manager, then I'm going to talk to the manager. And what's the manager going to tell me? Oh, you need to listen to him. What? You see what I'm saying? You have to listen to him. That's how sad it is. So in order for you to understand, in order for you to understand life and to make, and to understand life, you have to you look around, you have to see it. Your brain is already taking millions and millions of, of forms of information without you realizing it. Without you ever knowing, it took in mad information, okay? But in the same process of it taking all that information, it's now formulating certain forms of understanding inside of you. See what I'm saying? So for kids, they take in things like a sponge because they're grown. So that means that their brains is taking in the information a lot harder than, um, than that of an adult who is who's attached and, and stuck with um, all the pressures and all the responsibilities that they have. You see what I'm saying? And that's the whole beautiful thing behind it. So for kids, well, as they're growing, they're taking in their forms of an idea of how they want to live their life and who they want to be. Just like that. And, it, you know, I grew up, um, I, I brought it up already, but I grew up in, in, you know, in a time where parents really did feel like Kids had no stress. You ain't going through nothing. You ain't got no stress. No. Yeah, they do. Kids have a lot of stress. They got to adapt to everything that's around them without guidance. Without guidance. You might be able to guide them when they're around you. But when they're in school, when they're dealing with things that, that you're not around, they, they have to adapt and learn from that, from those experiences on their own. And a lot of times they do not understand it at all. It scares them. It really scares them. You know what I mean? Um, good example. Let's talk about uh, the form of puberty. Young, 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 young adult boys hit a puberty moment, don't know how to understand what to do with their hormones, what to do with their um, nothing. 
they're, they're confused. So what happens is they take in the feeling of whatever that they're, they're feeling at the time on a high 10. And they're not controlling it or trying to control it. they just doing, just going off. When you look at um a daughter, for example, a daughter goes through her first period. She's scared. Like, she thinks something wrong with her. I've seen movies where it talked about the, the young girl or, or whatever the case is was scared. Thinking that they was dying or, or some junk like that. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm talking about. They're taking in the inf the information and the, and the emotion of things a lot deeper than when than the adults do because adults know how to cope, how to deal, know how to do, do all of that. Kids don't. So they're only going off of whatever they feel in a given moment. So when you have a child, and there are some parents that's out here who do, who do this, and um, you know, and God, God forbid, and and I'm praying for the kids that are going through this right now. But there are parents out here who, who do not see the value of their children, like at all. They calling them names, cussing them out, saying that they're worthless, they ain't worth nothing, you know, the whole nine, and they have to hear that every day. But we don't talk about that when they go to commit a crime. We don't talk about that when they when they end up doing worse than that. The only thing we see is the monster in them. Oh, that kid killed their parents. Wow, that's crazy. Oh, that kid, that kid was stealing cars, vandalizing things. Oh, that kid's acting out. We look at all the problems, but we never look at what caused the problem. You see what I'm saying? That's why I called this the reality in the eyes of children. Yes, adults got way more responsibilities and probably stronger pressures than a child may have. But a child still has stress. They feel in things emotionally that they have no control over. You know what I'm saying? They're hurting inside when they're in pain. You know what I mean? Um, I like anime. I know I love anime. Let's talk about Gara from Naruto, for example. And one of the scenes, he said he, he had the ability to, the sand was moving on its own. So, and it protected him. So he never had a moment where he felt a scar. He was hurt, physical blood, nothing. So he was talking to the um, sister of his mother. And he said to her, I do have scars. And she said, you do? And he said, yeah. He said, I hurt, I, hurt, I hurt a lot. And she said, where? He said, right here. And he touched his heart. This is a kid who's being bullied because of what he is and, 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 and who he is. He had a monster inside of his body that he, that he had no understanding or, or even a say, a say in his life to have. They just put it in him. The people in his village put it in him. And he had, he had no say in it. They did it when he was a baby. So when he started growing up, kids didn't want to be around him. They didn't want to play with him. They thought he was a monster. And kids could be very cruel when they very brutally honest <laughs> when they're younger. You know what I'm saying? Um, so he was being bullied. And then adults were scorning him, looking at him like he was a freak, like he was a monster. And it's just, just a little kid. He's taking in that emotion 10 million times any adult can ever feel it. When you're a kid, your emotions is on high. You're feeling it like you've never felt it before. You know what I'm saying? That's the literal form of your heart being out your chest. Kids go through that every single day. I was a young kid thinking the most craziest things about myself. How I wasn't worth it. It was a point where I thought that I was going to die suffering. And I, and then I felt like I deserved it. That's how bad it was. But this is young kids thinking this about themselves. That's why when they start to get a little older, they start resorting to cutting. Suicidal thoughts. The whole nine. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's, it's really sad. Because, like I said, babies to young kids to teens... Feel it way deeper than anybody. You know what I mean? Like, um, I did a poem on something one time, and it was called um, uh, Welcome to the Other Side of the Looking Glass, and it's Angels Fly. 
And it's this, the, the whole poem was actually about a young kid growing up. It started off from a baby. Like you ever notice a baby looking into a corner or looking into a random spot and just starts laughing or crying? Well, what if they saw an angel, a loved one, or something that scared them? You never know. They're more in, more in tune to the things around them because they don't have the distractions. Same thing goes with the emotion inside of a, of a, of a child. I, I believe that um, if given the right circumstances and the right forms of help, a child can raise itself. They, they can raise themselves. If given the right circumstances, you see what I'm saying? I'm not saying that they're not going to have influences in a life. Might be a teacher, might be whoever. You know what I'm saying? Um, for Naruto, he he was the same as the, the character Gar I just told you about. He was being a scorn. He was doing all of that. And he could have turned into the worst, most vile villain of all time in the series. But a character that actually hated him because the fox that was inside of him killed his parents... Uh, the character hated him for that. And instead of seeing Naruto as Naruto, he saw Naruto as the fox. And um, he had to go through his own little personal thing and then realize that Naruto wasn't the fox. Naruto was Naruto. And that he's an amazing child. He showed love and compassion to someone that he hated um, because of a circumstance he had no control over. So he, when he showed that love and compassion... It fueled something in the Naruto to continue being the, the best that he can be. And then after that, he met on to meeting new people that influenced them in a positive manner. So he raised himself, but he had influences around him that allowed him to have the experiences he needed to become a good man. But on top of that, give it 100% to God because he had the willpower to stick through his suffering. Some kids actually can, even when they're feeling those raw emotions. So we have to give more credit to the young children inside of life because they are going through stuff that we don't even understand. So when I, when a young child comes in and says they want to play with you, they want you to play the game with them, or they, or they want to take a picture with you, it's not just a simple, oh, can you please take a picture, da, da, da. It's a connection. They want to build that. They want to keep that bond that they had when they was on. They was connected to you in the womb. It's, it's a subconscious thing. They still want to connect. They don't want to lose that bond that y'all had. See what I'm saying? So when you shoot them off the way you do, when you, eh, you see I'm busy. You're, you're, you're single-handedly punching out that bond. And it's sad to say because even for me, um, my mother, we're not, we're not cool. It's sad. Because there was no reason for, that, for, for, for us not to be. You know what I'm saying? During the time. <clears throat> there were chances. You know what I mean? So... Children are just trying to connect and build. That's all it is. You know what I mean? They were trying to keep what was important to them. Think about it like a precious a precious pearl or a gem in your hand. And the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. You don't want to let go of it. That's how a lot of parents characterize how they feel about their kids when they see them as their firstborn. When I looked at you, you were the most fragile thing. And I wanted to protect you with everything that I had. But that's how kids feel about the bonds and connections they have with you. Okay? When you snuff that away from them, they now on a crossroads of choice. They could go the wrong way or they could go the right way. It's up to you. And up to them. Okay? When a child doesn't feel like they're connected with you anymore, they feel like, what's the point of being here? What is the point? I have no one who loves me. And then on top of that, you know, them feeling that way about whatever, you know, they whatever was going on between them and their parents, they gotta go to school and get and get the file about bullies and teachers and all that different type of stuff. 
You know, it's sad. So sometimes we have to look in a child's eyes and, and realize that a child is seeing things that's deeper than what we're seeing things. See, all we see is what we're physically dealing with in life. They're seeing something deeper than that. They're trying not to lose connections. They're trying to understand the world and what... And, and they're confused as heck, not knowing what's going on and trying to take in the information the best way they can. It's like they're in an a, a, um, a unending or, or um, an infinite um, a infinite school. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like you're in an infinite school trying to figure out, what's that? Oh, okay, so how does that work? What's that? I don't understand that. Can you explain that for, for me, please? Bills? What? What, huh? I mean, yeah, I'm making money, but what? What's the bills? What's that for? Mortgage? Huh? Rent? Phone bill? What? <laughs> and then take it even lower than that. I gotta go to school? I remember the first time I went to church. Oh, man. That's a story. That's a story for y'all. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna have to cut this because I don't want to. I don't want this to be too too long. But I still wanted to get into children. Um, when I was younger, I, I love God with everything that I had. First of all, first and foremost, God, thank you so much for making me the man I am today. I love God. When I was younger, it was a different story. I went through a lot and a lot, a lot of sufferings, a lot of pain. So. I, I had different mixed feelings about God, but um, long story short, I was crying to God the whole time and didn't know. Every suffering I was going through, it started off with me crying to my mother, realizing that wasn't going to happen. All you can see is me crying to something. And I, and I didn't know who I was crying to, but I was crying and I was screaming out to him. And I didn't realize that was God. I was crying out to God the whole time. I had no idea. And it's mind blowing. Because as time went on, when I first went to church, um, I was just, I was playing around. Like I, just, I was, I was trying to do everything but what I was supposed to do. And then, um, but the whole time God was instilling the knowledge into me without me ever realizing it. He was instilling his will, his influence the whole nine and I didn't know that I was connecting with him in the way that I was um finally one day I went to sleep and when I woke up I loved him with everything I had and I never stopped but the funny thing behind it what I wanted to tell you guys was that I remember the first time I was going to go to church I was laying in the bed it was a Sunday my mother came in and she goes Quan get up Get up. And I'm like, huh? Huh? What time is it? It's eight in the morning. Hey, mom, I'm trying to sleep. Oh, no, you got to get up. It's time for you to go to Sunday school. I said, school? Mom, school? Mom, I had school all week. I don't want to go to school. What? School? <laughs> like, I was shocked. Like, I was like, what? You know what I mean? So that's the whole point to it all. That's so that same level of that right there was what kids deal with every single day. So again, beautiful people, I thank you so much for tuning in to Guerrilla Tactics, the only place where you can commit guerrilla warfare to make change. I thank you so much for tuning into this video. I hope that I was, be, I was able to inform you a little bit about the understanding of the emotions and feelings that kids take in versus what we might take in as adults or young adults. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they may be kids and they may not have a lot of responsibility, but the the raw form of that emotion and force that they feel is great. It's huge. And what we give them and how we give um, influence, understandings and knowledge to them de determines on what they're going to be. So much so that they connect so much so that they create themselves into characters, into um into uh, uh, to, into uh, characters and into action figures and heroes that they, they admire. And they try to use that as an influence. And the sad reality of it is that there's some kids that do the opposite. You know what I mean? Remember the Rugrats? Love that show. 
never really wondered, nobody ever really wondered why the little girl would always walk around with this doll with ripped out pieces of hair and the whole nine. That's how she saw herself. So she kept that toy to her because that was a connection of her, herself to herself. It's sad to say, but it's the reality. You know what I'm saying? So when you shush off your kids, they're taking in that feeling and, they, and it's hitting them hard because they're still trying to connect with you. You got to remember, they, they started off connected. They don't want to lose that. You know what I mean? No matter how old they get, they don't want to lose that. You know what I mean? So in the reality of the eyes of children, kids, yes, need their parents. But more so, they need love, compassion, and understanding. Because in the moments where they hit those crossroads and they're going to decide on whether they want to be a villain or they want to be a hero, it's up to the experiences that we place in them. So with that being said, so with that being said, beautiful people, thank you for tuning in. Please come back to Guerrilla Tactics for more bangers. Check out my Instagram. Gotta check out the Insta. Um, Moon Vargas48 for updates. Um, even some videos, pictures of just me showing you guys what I go through on a daily basis. Tune into my Patreon. Tune into um my TikTok. I have a bunch of different platforms. Also, please like, comment, and please subscribe to my channel. Um, and most importantly, hit that notification bell for more content um, from my channels. Thank you again, and have a blessed day. God bless. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Life just moves on. All right. Yeah. Three, two. The beginning of the secrets to the light that you needed Looking in my own eyes, knowing I couldn't defeat it All the feelings in my soul, all my thoughts and told Looking for